Greetings Internet once again, it's Eurosoul here and uh, I'm going to be talking about primarily censorship today, online censorship, how do we get around online censorship, some of the examples of online censorship, my own experiences with it. Um, for those who don't know, I have a long background in working with technology, I run a social network, I created one myself, um, which will be gradually ramping up um, marketing and, and kind of launching that more fully pretty soon. and. I've been online on social networks since the very beginning um, on tribe.net way back when and I've seen a lot of stuff happening regarding free speech, control, lies, fraud. Um, you know, most of the mainstream networks are heavily corrupt from my perspective and, you know, there, there's lots of power play going on and bribes and who knows what going on behind the scenes to get certain people silenced. And I've been censored on YouTube and Facebook, I can prove that. Uh, I've done nothing wrong. They've never said, oh, you've broken a rule. They just block my comments. And I know that if it's happening to me, it's happening to probably tens, if not hundreds of thousands of other people, which means that since these sites control a large amount of the traffic that happens online, it means that a good percentage of what people are saying about the events in the world, you are not able to see, is what it comes down to. And it's not because they are bad people, they're criminals or anything like that. It's basically because the corporations carrying the net, carrying the, the voices and the, and the text and the traffic say, no, you can't see it. And in some cases, governments might be behind that. And in some cases, they aren't. So that's what I'm going to look at today. And there's there's been lots of really interesting developments of stories on that subject in the last few days, which is why I'm covering this. So there's so much to say on this. I'm going to you know, anybody who knows me knows that if you ask me even a simple question, the answer might take 20 minutes. Um, it's not because I can't cut things down. It's because I have so much information that I've that I've picked up in the last 20, 30 years that I have so much to say, basically. Uh, so I'm going to try to, to be concise here. I've got uh, eight links to go through and some of them I can jump through fairly quickly. So I'm just going to jump straight into these. Um, I'm gonna, I've got a video here which I just found today, which someone shared with me on, on Steam It really really good um, and basically it is from Project Veritas and it's a whistleblower talking about um, how Facebook deals with what she calls de-boosting which is for anybody who, who's used Facebook and other similar sites might know uh, when you make a post on Facebook or a video whatever it is you want the world to see it you have options to boost it which means you can pay Facebook to boost it up and more people will see it. it it's not like the old days where you'd make a post and then basically everybody who wanted to subscribe to your post would see it no no <laughs> no they figured out a way to make money out of that so now if you make a post not everybody who subscribes to you and wants to see your posts will see it and you have to do certain things like get good engagement on your post people like it and act around it and then more people will see it but you can also pay them to boost that up artificially so what she's talking about here is uh, the opposite of that, which is what I've experienced and lots of other people have experienced, uh, which is where certain profiles will be marked to be de-boosted. So they've got, you know, basically someone's written some code to um, have the opposite effect. So if they choose to, then that account will not be very effective on the platform. And they're not necessarily going to, well, they won't inform me that they've done it, basically. So let's just skip through some scenes here. And I was a content review analyst for the intellectual property department at Facebook. I handled copyright and trademark claims. And in the course of doing my duties, I noticed other things that were going on on accounts. And that is why I came forward. This is my story. Everyone is expected to be the same. Everyone's expected to not talk about these things openly. In the orientation at Facebook, they said the number one rule of Facebook is don't talk about Facebook. I see an odd note on an account. Being a curious person, I decide to look into it more. Things will only change if we, the people, are brave enough to step forward. Right, so interesting stuff. Um, basically, I mean, it's quite a long video. You can watch the original thing. I'll link it under this, under my video. Um, she's talking about working at Facebook and there's this guy here, a programmer, um, who sort of, she kept seeing his name on these on these memos and, and um, internal documents relating to this program of de-boosting. And she, she basically highlights that um, it's well-known um, 
kind of political people. She says it on the so-called right wing of, of things, but no doubt they do it to lots of other people as well. You know, uh, a government or, or someone somewhere says to Facebook, hey, we don't like the fact that vaccinations is a, is a, is a good one. Um, we don't like that our message about vaccinations are being is being ignored now. So uh, we're blaming you for that because you're spreading all this anti-vaccine information. When in reality, it's not Facebook spreading anti-vaccine information, it's human beings spreading uh, anti-vaccine information because it's material that they value and they, whether rightly or wrongly, and you know, some information will be right, some will be wrong, but the point is that they are interested in it, understandably, uh, and they share it. That's the whole function of it. And, and you know, government, corrupt governments are basically saying, oh, no, no, we can't have you allowing information like that to be spread around. It's endangering people, endangering people. Well, it's the people who are sharing it. So the government literally are treating people like cattle and controlling them. It's a bit like a farmer saying, oh, the cattle have realised that when I inject them with all these drugs, you know, X, Y, Z happens. Or the cattle have realised when I lead them to the uh, the torture execution uh, chamber where we kill them all, that, they, that, that uh, they're going to get killed. They don't like that. So we can't have them anywhere near any information that tells them that's happening. You know, it, it, that's how I literally see it personally. But, um, you know, <laughs> Nazis burn books. Uh, Alex Jones is another one. I haven't even brought his links up here, but yeah, I mean, there's a, whatever you think about Alex Jones, he is, he and other people like him have been completely deplatformed from all these networks. And, um, you know, people say that he spreads fake news and all this stuff. But if you actually look into what he says, a lot of the times, a lot of the time, first of all, it's correct. Secondly, um, he gets heavily misrepresented, is all I'll say. And, and he is difficult to watch sometimes. He does rant a lot. And I can totally understand people not wanting to watch him. But you've got to learn, you've got to realise that one of the main methods of, of suppressing free spree, speech and your freedom that the controllers have is of tricking you into putting people in boxes. They'll paint a picture, a psychological picture of a person. And they'll say, this person is in that box and that box is bad. Don't bother looking into it. Don't actually study the person. Listen to what they have to say in detail. Pick apart the points. Critically think. Just trust us. It's a bad box to be in, and he's in that box. And that's what they do. And then that's what a lot of hate speech is, and so on. It's it's. I mean, what is hate speech? Hate is extreme dislike. So hate speech basically technically means you're talking about things, uh, and within the things you're talking about, there is either extreme dislike or you're highlighting extreme dislike. There's nothing wrong with extreme dislike. Some things are extremely disliked or extremely dislikable. Um, but I know that in the legal definitions it's a bit different. But, you know, incitement to violence is a law that already covers or a rule that already covers a lot of that stuff. We don't need hate speech, in my opinion, as a, as a rule. But anyway, as I said, when I talk about things, I tend to go off in many different directions. So um, coming back to this uh, Facebook thing, um, they're highlighting here that one of the um, the effects of being sort of blacklisted here is that the share button won't appear, for example, on your posts, which people have said and complained about many times. And I wasn't sure whether that was something that was um, due to a misunderstood feature of Facebook or whether it was something more nefarious. It turns out it's actually them censoring people. Um, sometimes share buttons don't appear because the post is in a private group, just so you know, but... Um, but yeah, there are cases when I've seen when the share button's just not there and it's on quite big posts and I was a bit confused, like, you know, lots and lots and lots of comments, big followers. And I was like, well, why, why would there not be a share button? That's a bit strange. Well, it turns out they've been blacklisted. Um, so she's talking here about Sigma, which she says is an artificial intelligence system originally designed to protect, um, people who might be suicidal and to stop certain activities happening and then they and this sort of this system was created to 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 sort of alter the way facebook interacts with those people and then it was then adapted for political purposes appear on whose pages um i would see it appear on several different conservative pages mm -hmm. i well, first noticed it with an account that i can't remember, but I remember once I started looking at it, I also saw it on Mike Cernovich's page, mm -hmm. saw it on Stephen Crowder's page, as well as the Daily Caller's page. We spoke to Stephen Crowder about this and he was disappointed but not surprised. He told us that this is not the first time Facebook has targeted him. After an April 2016 Gizmodo article, Crowder... So, I mean, I'm interested by this, that they target conservative people. It's not what I would have expected at all, but I think the term conservative and social socialist and someone have been very manipulated anyway. So, 
when people use those words, I don't necessarily automatically know exactly what they mean, but anyway. Live stream things. There was no warning sent to the user. These were actions that were be t being taken without the users knowing. Did any of this show up on this, the task version of the Facebook back end? Uh, did it show up in there, anywhere there? No, no tasks were created when these um, live stream de-boosts would occur. Mm -hmm. The story of using certain keywords to demote or downrank certain content is not unfamiliar. We exposed similar activities at Twitter during our investigation of them last year. It's good, all right. So, yeah, I mean, Twitter as well. Uh, I don't really use Twitter so much, but yeah, they're well known for doing this as well. So, um, and it's pointing out here, Mark Zuckerberg testifies, CEO or ex-CEO, I'm not sure exactly what he's now at Facebook. Um, you know, Android looking guy, basically very edgy, very kind of stressed, very like, oh, I'm lying, um, testified in front of the American government, basically saying, uh, well, let's listen to him. Full proof. Overall, I want to make sure that we provide people with the most voice possible. I, I want the widest possible expression, and I don't want anyone at our company to make any decisions based on the the uh, political ideology of the content. What Zuckerberg says in front of the Senate is completely different than what is actually happening, according to the insider. Do you think? So she, he asked her, does, does she think Zuckerberg knows about this? She says, I don't know, basically, but she doesn't think so. But, you know, she wouldn't know, would she? I'd say probably does. The same de-boost comment on their account. Is this your name? Right? This is the programmer, that allegedly, that, that you know, they're, they're saying was responsible for this. He sort of He's like, oh, no, I'm not talking to you. What's your name? And then just leaves. He looks to me vaguely militaristic. I don't know. It's just his color scheme, isn't it? But anyway, um, then there's this guy. Yeah, so. Uh, significant duties. He has worked on informed sharing ranking demotion and the news feed reduction strategy. On Facebook's private scientist. workplace, Yamamoto makes it clear that he is on a crusade against hate speech. However, his definition of hate speech is troubling. Quote, hate speech needs to be stopped, but there's quite a bit of content. So he goes on to explain that what he's talking about here, content near the perimeter of hate speech, is basically content on the, on the platform that isn't classed legally as hate speech, but some people might be offended by it, so we need to lock it down. And that, literally, that's the core of this. That gives these people an excuse to silence I mean, basically anything, you know, I mean, if um, someone, I don't know, someone puts out um, material of about food and, and, and one people, one group of people find it offensive, like vegan. I mean, I'm vegan. I do find it disgusting that people promote meat, for example. But I understand that that is like a cultural norm. Um, and I don't really expect um, Twitter or, or Facebook or whatever to to silence all the posts about meat just because you know vegans are very concerned about animals in a way it might be good if they did but at the end of the day it's not going to stop people eating meat it's so ingrained in them they're going to do it anyway so my position is basically most material should be visible and it should be up to us human beings to make our own decisions and think our own thoughts and what they're doing here is basically forcing their own will and their own view onto public conversation and, you know, this, I'm not showing you a lot of this material because I disagree with a lot of what she's saying in the sense that she's, um, she's quite naive. She's basically sort of, she doesn't want to view these people. Maybe she just doesn't want to get sued. I don't know, but she, she's, she's sort of saying, oh, well, you know, their, their, their aims are, they're not that bad kind of thing. They're, they don't necessarily know exactly everything that they're doing. But, you know, I would say as a technology focused person, I'm well aware that people get into technology a, because they love technology. There's those kinds of people and, and they get manipulated often. And they get sort of brought in to work on projects and they do bad things without even really knowing it. That's probably a very high percentage of people in technology. But then there's also people who get into technology because they want power and they see technology as being powerful and they want power. And some of them want power over other people. They've been bullied at school, whatever it is, they've got something, an, a grievance, and they want to use technology to control other people. Um, and and you know there's definitely a lot of that going on i think that's one of the main problems we have you know, people 
once somebody's been traumatized and and had violence enacted against them it takes some courage and healing for them to not fall into the trap of wanting to get revenge and continuing on that that kind of pattern of abuse um and unfortunately this isn't something that a lot of people really understand at this point so and being in that violence and imbalance and and bullying and so on are so prevalent it means that a large percentage of the population are unconsciously or semi-consciously acting out intentions to control other people out of fear, basically, because they, on a certain level, they're frightened that if other people are free, then that means they can be attacked. So then, therefore, they're going to preemptively control everyone else, or as many people as possible. I think that's one of the major, major patterns involved in this, and in so many other problems in the world as well. Um, so it's just going through here, going back to this video, uh, C Seiji Yamamoto, uh, basically, he's talking about, this is a report he co-authored, where allegedly he um, identified these keywords as being ones which their system could look for when looking for a troll. And these are words related to the kind of Keck meme culture, uh, which, you know, has actually, I mean, I hardly ever see it now. So that would suggest that they have actually shut it down because it was a very big thing at one time. Um, so the keywords they're using here, IRL. Well, IRL means in real life. It's got nothing to do with trolling. It's just, it's just a, an online slang term in real life. I mean, it literally has nothing to do with what he's talking about here. Um, these other terms I've never... Oh, zucked. Yeah, and that's... Uh, I don't even know exactly what that means. Re is, is to do with an autistic meme. Normie. Yeah, I mean, these things, they are vaguely related. Yeah, trolls would, would possibly use some of these words, right? Some of them would. But many trolls wouldn't. Many trolls are totally professional and they would never even use any of these words. So this, this whole concept here is bogus. And as with any form of censorship, um, it's, it does look a lot to me like justification for implementing control systems. So you can say, oh, there's these bad people doing these bad things, and look, this is how we classify them, and, and now we'll shut them down. And uh, and then, you know, f feature creep a few months later, oh, now we'll, well, we've got, you know, this is problem, these people are being, oh, oh we'll just, just use the system we're already using, just tweak it a bit, and shut them down as well. And, you know, it doesn't take much imagination to look back at Hitler's Germany, for example, in World War II, um, and look at the way that his ideology that was completely insane, um, basically, uh, the principles in, that were projected as being true there, which were false, the false narrative of the Aryan super race and all this stuff, uh, were used as a justification for killing off lots of different, or well, various different subgroups of humanity. Um so I'm not suggesting here that Facebook literally are trying to kill people, although, well, I'm not going to get into all of that, but let's just say Mark Zuckerberg has put in $5 billion of funding into alleged medical research in which he's implanting brain implants into primates that mind control them. And that's not some crazy theory. That's mainstream news admitted by them. Um, so, yeah, let's be concerned for where these companies are actually going. Google um, has bought at least nine of the world's largest robotics companies including ones that make military robots so this isn't just some issue of people in their bedroom getting shut down this is potentially one of the biggest subjects on planet earth right now everything to do with this needs to be paid attention to um, and there are solutions to some of this stuff and we can act so you know i'm getting to that um, so the, again that's why it's important to, to study it so that you can make intelligent decisions so they're talking here about how they have a fake account index, which means that each account is ranked on Facebook for signs that it's a fake account. And as the lady here says, you know, it's fair enough. And yeah, it really is. Um, it's probably a good idea for them to do something to um, uh, improve the quality of the network. But the devil's in the details. And here, you know, they've got an explanation of what these different um, terms mean. I mean, they've, they've even included MSM in here. MSM, mainstream media. I mean... Using MSM is not a sign that you're a troll. It just isn't. It's completely ridiculous. Um, it, it's a sign that you are conscious that there's a difference between the mainstream media and other sources of media. And generally, people that use MSM will be often people that are speaking against mainstream media. So that's not a sign of trolling unless you consider that mainstream media are the truth and that anybody who contradicts mainstream media are trolls, which seems to be what they're saying. Um, and that is backed up by some of their other statements as well. And that is, I mean, pff, 
whatever you want to call that. I mean, it's it, from a government perspective, that would be tyranny. From a power perspective, that would be like plutocracy type oligarchic situation where you've got a small number of very wealthy people and the corporations they control able to control the narrative and, and free speech. Pretty messed up. Um, so just going to skip through the rest of this here quickly. Um, justifying why they're doing it. As a very homogenous company mm -hmm. to kind of shut this down. Another tactic that Yamamoto describes sounds like outright bullying. Quote, when a user does something egregious, warranting an account suspension or deletion, we should notify the friend network. All right, so this is something that the Chinese communist government has implemented, as far as I know, into their social credit system. And if you don't know about that, that's a social network, as I understand it, that is, everyone is obliged to be a member of by law in certain cities and probably at some point over the whole country. Uh, and people lose their human rights when they lose score on that network. So, I mean, it's just mind boggling. People literally go around on the street, monitoring their neighbors, noting down good and bad things they've done and reporting it, and their score will go up or down in response. If, you, if it goes up, you get benefits in society, like uh, cheaper insurance or something like that. If it goes down, you lose your, free, you lose your ability to freely travel, you lose human rights. It's unbelievable to me. It's just shocking that humans would try and do this to each other and even accept it. Um, so one of the things they did there was actually, um, as far as I know, I'm not in China, but as I understand it, your score will affect your friend's score. So it, for, it kind of attempts to get your friends to conform, to try and pressure you to conform to the system's rules. So not only do you lose score, but you lose basically your friends because your friends won't want to be friends with you if you go against this system it's really a terrible terrible thing um and he's actually suggesting they should basically do the same sort of thing they should put pressure on your friends if you break or or, or you do something that they class as being trolling or of that nature outed as being a miscreant <laughs> i mean these people these are people who have no guts at all they, they have no um heart they have no compassion they have no respect for free will or themselves or each other they said they're the opposite of, of of what humans need to be they are disrespectful of life itself in the name of being respectful of life itself that's the frustrating thing they think or that at least they're projecting that they think that by shutting down people that they they identify as being um unpleasant or you know in some way disrespectful somehow them shutting that those people down is not itself disrespectful somehow they're like justified in doing that and are right automatically and you know they're, they're so right and so it's such a great idea that they didn't announce it publicly and it's completely secret and it took a whistleblower to tell us about it um Steven crowder we asked Yamamoto about the insider actually seeing a troll score under the fake account index in CRT, Facebook's back-end content review tool. You actually created this report, did you not? I don't actually have any comment on any of this. Yamamoto issued a no-comment comment and fled the scene. I think the biggest thing is that getting the documents, getting video or you know still pictures of what was going on, that shows that it actually is happening. This isn't rumors. You know, they talk about how right-wingers just, they come up with all these crazy theories and that's not actually happening at these social media companies. They poo-poo it. But here it is, and it's in your face. After leaving her employment at Facebook, the insider came to work for Project Veritas. Right, so, very interesting. Now. Coming on to the next story, which I'll just touch on briefly. In Britain, there's a guy called Tommy Rolison. That's not his real name. It's not the point. It's not his original name. Um, and he speaks out against um, Islamic um, extremism. And uh, specifically, here's the thing. People don't listen to him because he's talking about Islamic extremism and they think that he's racist often, although a lot of people do listen to him. Um, I don't know if he is racist or not. I mean, it's debatable, but... 
for me, the point is he's talking about censorship and the actual actions of the government, which is, to me, why I'm interested in him primarily, because he seems to be right. And, he, and what he's saying fits in with mostly what I see around the world, or around Britain, at least, and America, um, on these kinds of subjects anyway. So he released a video a few days ago called Panadrama. And for those who don't know, in Britain, BBC, the big state-run media corporation, basically... Um, I would say a mind control system, but um, so Panorama is one of their flagship investigative reporting um, shows, and they put together uh, a show on this guy, Tommy Robinson. It never got aired, as far as I know, um, because when they came to interview him, he got tipped off that they were trying to set him up and they were manipulating witnesses and uh, trying to get them to lie and misrepresent things and so on. So he had undercover footage of that, and he did a pretty good job, I would say, of uh, exposing the BBC there and the fact that they were literally trying to put out fake news um, to discredit him. Now, some of the things Tommy Robinson says in this video um, I think are a bit overblown somewhat, although I can understand why he did it. But ultimately, I think he's right, and I think um, the, the evidence speaks for itself. Um, so a few days after that, he got delisted and removed from Facebook, as I understand it. And the view count on his documentary on YouTube was frozen. It stopped going up. It was it went up to like 900,000. I don't know what it's at now. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, um, it was definitely frozen for at least a day. I saw it. So that, again, that's something else they do on YouTube. They, they, they might not... If a, if a video that the establishment doesn't want you to see is getting a lot of traction they they will be careful not to just remove it especially if it hasn't broken any laws but they will do things like um they might turn the comments off or they will stop the view count going up to stop it going onto the trending page or to make people think it's less popular than it is that kind of thing um so yeah this is an interesting um subject to look into this is actually worth watching this documentary uh, he then moved on to Steam, or at least someone created a profile for him on Steam and DTube. And he's talking about, oh, well, I need to create my own platform, you know, because we knew this was coming. We're all going, you know, censorship, censorship. Well, the thing is, people like me have known about this for 10 plus years and have been doing stuff for 10 plus years to get around this problem. Um, and, you know, he's really... It's sad to me in a way that if you go to the website that, he, that he point, he's pointing everyone to, it's basically just this documentary. He's saying, oh, I've been taken off the internet. Well, no, your documentary's still on the internet. Um, Alex Jones has been taken off the internet. Like, he's literally gone from everywhere. But anyway, um, on, his, on Tommy Robinson's website at the moment, it's just this documentary with basically a page asking for money. Now, I've worked for seven years plus or longer on my own social network without really being paid at all for that. Um... I'm a professional in this field and yeah, I haven't done the things he's done. I haven't got the profile that he's got, but it would be great if people who wanted free speech platforms would give their money to people who have worked hard to do this for a long time and know what they're talking about. Not just me, but other people as well, um, because we're going to probably do it better than him. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, not putting him down. It's just that this isn't his area of expertise, right? Um, and I'm going to look through some of the other sites here that I would recommend checking out as well. So I'm not just trying to sell you my site or my... I'm not trying to sell it at all, actually. I haven't even um, got any active marketing or anything for it. But the point is, there are numerous services that already exist that are very good for free, free speech. And we don't need 10,000 of them. We just need a few that work really well. So Steam It and Steam, the Steam ecosystem... Um, is one that I would recommend. I've been using it for a couple of years. They actually pay you to post, which is an amazing feature. And, it re and it's a threat not just to the mainstream media, but also to um, banking systems and governments and lots of things. I mean, it's it shouldn't be seen as a threat. It should be seen as an awesome thing for them. It should be something they should use. It's a great thing for humanity, this system, in a lot of ways. Um, it's fairly complicated to explain, but um, the short version is... Anyone can run a server, uh, a computer that helps run this network. It's a blockchain, it's a cryptocurrency, it's a, it's a database system that isn't housed in one central building somewhere like Facebook's. Um, basically, the people run the network and it's not censored. Uh, individual websites like steamit.com or steampeak.com, which is another one I like, um, which is here, uh, they may censor posts because they're obliged to by law or they choose to or whatever. But... The underlying post itself is never deleted from the database and anyone can access the database. So, um, technically speaking, you can post on Steam and um, unless you post something that is literally, totally the scummiest, illegalist, most illegal thing ever, like child abuse or whatever, 
um, then it's going to stay up there um, on the blockchain. And you know, sometimes um, we don't, I don't think I think maybe it's happened once, but it's not a common thing. But if someone did publish something, you know, totally criminal, illegal on there, uh, then steps would be taken to remove that from the blockchain at the blockchain level. But it's very rare. And generally speaking, if we're just talking about free speech issues, it's awesome, Steam. Um, you know, I, I've never seen anybody complaining, really. There are a few issues, well, there are a few issues involved with the financial system of voting and how that works, but we're getting there, we're improving all that stuff. Um, and I happen to have it up on this page here on a story about a class action lawsuit that's active at the moment. So if you're pissed off with Facebook and Google, check this out and give it your support. Um, you can actually even invest in the class action lawsuit as well and get a potential cut of the payouts. Um, and for those who aren't aware, Google was fined, I think it was 5.1 billion euros in 2017 for illegally delisting sites. And they actually did this to my site, eureka.org, U-R-E-K-A.org, if you want to check it out. Um, but because my site isn't commercial, it doesn't have a, a financial incentive behind it. I don't have a budget. So therefore, I don't have time and money to invest in tracking down Google and bring up a court case and so on. Um, as it turned out, there was a class action lawsuit against Google, which I didn't know about, brought by several companies for them doing what they did to me. And these companies won. And, and the fine was 5.1 billion euros. It's massive. Um, Potentially, maybe I'll come back to that, you know, when I've got a bit more time and money, it would be good to get something done about that. Um, but this is a great opportunity as well. So um, the short version of this is Facebook and Google, those who are interested in cryptocurrencies may remember that the price of crypto cryptocurrencies shot up um, around Christmas uh, 2017. And shortly afterwards, a few weeks later, it nosedived. And at the time it was going up, people in that scene, you know, thought a lot of people thought, wow, this is really the beginning of, of this system kind of replacing the banking system, basically. Uh, and then a few weeks later, the price nosedived. And there was so much going on at the time, it was difficult to really know what happened. Um, it wasn't until later on that a lawyer in Australia who runs, who's running this um, class action lawsuit pointed out to me and other people that uh, the price crashed a few days after Facebook and Google banned cryptocurrency advertising. Now, even to me, I wasn't immediately aware of the significance of that, but Facebook and Google carry 66% of online advertising, which means that if you run a business based on a cryptocurrency, two thirds of your ability to advertise to your prime customers, potential customers, is now gone. And, you know, some people will say, well, it's their freedom, you know, the companies can choose to do what they want with regards to things like that. The problem is you've got anti-monopoly and antitrust laws, which prevent companies from stopping competitors using their services unfairly. And some cryptocurrency projects are social networks like Steam. And so if they, by banning cryptocurrency projects, Facebook and Google have also banned their competitors from using their platform, which is illegal. Uh, and since the price of cryptocurrency dropped by three to four hundred billion dollars in the few days after they did that, that means that this case can be brought for three hundred billion dollars. It's actually in process at the moment. Uh, anybody who had cryptocurrency around that time can sign up. As part of the class action lawsuit, you don't have to be, in, it's being run out of Australia, but you don't have to be in Australia, you can be anywhere. Um, they're also selling tokens, cryptocurrency tokens that basically allow you to help fund the case. And then those tokens will be uh, used to reward you at the end of the case. If the case wins, then those tokens will shoot up in value um, and uh, or some mechanism like that will be used basically to, to reward you from the payouts. So anybody who's kind of pissed off with Facebook and Google, definitely check this out. jpbliberty.com is the website. Um, I can just quickly load that up in here. This is JPB Liberty on Steam. And this is their website, which tells you much more about it and who they are and what they're doing. And it's, yeah, lots of good information on there. Um, so yeah, please do get involved in that. And um, I'll put a link under this video for, for that as well. And also, um, it will be my like referral link as well. I don't know if they're still doing that or not, but it's in there anyway. So next topic, um, who else is other than steam, uh, fighting back against all of this uh, and myself and eureka.org. Uh, well, Gab, another one, um, another social network. And, uh, this site got a bad name. I would say maliciously manipulated to have a bad name because people that were being kicked off of other social networks were going on there 
uh, to some extent because it's a free, free speech platform. And so therefore the mainstream media says, oh, did, you know, Gab, it's a Nazi website or whatever. Um, I haven't used Gab a lot, but I can't say that I would say it's a Nazi website. It seems to be a free speech website. And that means that you're going to have people on there that other sites kick off. Um, so yeah, there probably are some Nazis on there, although I haven't seen them. There's probably all kinds of people on there. Um, but free speech is free speech, isn't it? Free speech isn't free speech minus the bits I don't like. Free speech is free speech. Um, free speech without people you don't like is not free speech. It's speech. Um, so yeah, I never really used Gab that much because I'm so busy doing other things, but the interesting thing is that they've launched a new service called Dissenter, a new service, uh, over the last few days. And I checked it out earlier on. It's a really good, really good idea. And this is it here. So um, other people have talked about this before. I think I've thought about it before, but um, they've done it and they seem to have done it quite well. What it basically does is allows you to post a link to a web page, any web page, and then it just opens up a comment thread for it. And anyone can comment on it. So if YouTube shuts down the comments on a video, if Facebook shuts down comments, if a news site or a science site, whatever it is, shuts down comments or censors the comments, you can just come onto here and have another comment thread that's completely uncensored and that isn't affected by any of the advertising budgets involved for those websites that originally you know, censored things. Um, it's really genius. And I think that this is it's going to become a big thing, I would say. Uh, it may become like the main um one of the main or at least this idea anyway will become one of the main places for people to communicate and comment on what's happening in the world um it's a layer that's basically missing it on the internet and now it's here so um yeah i mean so far i love it uh, i haven't used it that much but it's really really great uh definitely do check it out dissenter.com basically you get a plug in for your browser firefox whatever it is and uh yeah it's just it's just really cool so um i don't know just pick, pick any old link here current top news spacex rocket this is on reuters so then we've got comment thread here with people just commenting and that's really all it is it's nothing amazing world changing from a technology perspective it's really simple actually but uh it just works so that's a really good option to bypass all this nonsense Here's Gab here as well that's connected. You have to have a Gab account to uh, to use to center. Um, we've also got BitChute here, which is a, like a sort of replacement for YouTube. For video, you can get paid. People can donate you money. And it's also an uncensored platform. I haven't used this much. Um, so I, yeah, I don't have that much to say about it, but definitely do check that out as well. Someone pointed me to this earlier on. I have literally not used it at all, but this is apparently Subscribestar. It's a, uh, like Patreon basically is a site which lets people support you and pay you, subscribe to you for you for your videos that you produce and other things you do online. They were censoring people. So Subscribestar is apparently um, an equivalent which is uh, uncensored. So I can't comment on this. I haven't used it at all, um, but yeah, it could be one to check out as well. And just coming back to Steam, just wanted to point out at the end of this that if you go to State of the Dapps, DAP, a Dapp is a distributed app. So distributed means not centralized, which means an internet application that isn't run out of a big centralized uh, company or uh, data center or something like that. So it's it's more like a, a people power type app. Uh, so Ethereum, which is one of the biggest um, cryptocurrencies, uh, allows people to create distributed apps. It's not very effective at that at the moment, I would say, but um, Steam also lets you do that. And there's lots of apps on Steam uh, at the moment. And as you can see, this is a list of all of the apps in the world, according to this website, it's probably some missing, but um, some of the biggest ones are Steam ones. This is a Steam one, this is a Steam one, Steam, Steam, uh, Steam, Steam, and so on. So you can see that Steam is quite a big deal, even though most people have not really heard about it because it's not marketed um, in a big way and i would say it is quite a threat to the mainstream and they do not want to tell you about it if you if you look on the wikipedia page for steam it's one of the most negative pages i've ever seen um and sometimes you know you, you look at pages like that and you might think oh well it was it's probably not updated very often but if you look at it actually every single news story or every single thing mentioned on the wikipedia page for steam 
is negative and it's up to date. That's the thing. So they've they've literally not picked on any of the good points about Steam and they've managed to keep up to date with all the news that's negative, which there isn't that much of it. I mean, in a project that's been around for pretty much three years, it's probably only about three really, you know, problematic things you could say about it. There was a hack in the early days um, and now when, when the crypto prices uh, tumbled, Steam wasn't able, the company, Steam Inc., that, that originally started the code, wasn't able to keep paying their, all of their staff, they had quite a lot of staff, they had to um, basically make a lot of them redundant. Um, things like that are in there. It doesn't mention anything at all about the fact that Steam has the most users of any DAP uh, system. Uh, you know, it's the far, one of the fastest, uh, if not the fastest, uh, or second or third fastest probably, um, uh, processing transactions out of all the cryptocurrencies uh, it has it did have i don't know if it still does it did have the highest number of transactions of all the cryptocurrencies and all these things are very relevant important pieces of information but they're not on wikipedia uh so yeah you know this is not the rantings of a conspiracy theorist these are verifiable facts that anybody can check out for themselves and when you put all these pieces of the puzzle together you don't have to use your imagination very much to realize that um, you know, the pyramid power systems of the world, the technocratic elite, as some people would call them, who seek to basically just retain as much power as they can for themselves and be as rich as they can, um, which really is not that much different to just a straight gang. It's just that now they've they've moved into billionaire, you know, mansions and um, uh, they work with computers instead of machine guns. Uh, you know, they're just doing everything they can to keep that power. And it doesn't really matter whether who gets hurt or, or, or killed basically in the process as a result of information being strangled and people not knowing the truth about what's happening on planet Earth. So this is a big deal. It is life and death, ultimately. It might seem like a small thing. Just one piece of information there, one speaker silenced here, you know, and so on. Uh, but when you add all of this stuff up, basically, you know, you, you end up with a situation where life is changed, the destiny of humanity is changed, and it's not changed towards freedom, it's changed towards enslavement, ultimately. So... Please do take some time to think about this. Do your own research into it. Ask me questions. You know, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Do check out some of these other sites. My site, Eureka.org. Um, gradually, it's going to be expanding. Uh, we have a Discord audio video chat service now. Um, uh, Steam, Steam Power sites. There's many Steam sites. There's, I mean, I didn't mention most of them. You've got DTube, which is like a YouTube equivalent. D Sound, which is a SoundCloud equivalent. All of these sites you'll get paid on as well. Um, some people have got huge amounts of money from this. 100,000 plus a year salary or pay or rewards, probably not salary is not the right word technically, but um, rewards for their for their work or for their blogging. Uh, you aren't going to get that from Facebook and you're probably not going to, you're very unlikely to get it from YouTube. So yeah, um, there aren't, anybody who does any sort of due diligence research into this, for them it's a no brainer. So yeah, do go check it all out. And I look forward to hear, hearing your comments on all of this. And uh, yeah, let's make the world better, basically. <laughs> Peace and uh, love to everyone. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.